Hey everybody, my name is Justin. Welcome back to another episode of Garage Talk. Today we're gonna to chat a little bit about suspension basics. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? Now, you guys have heard me talk about various suspension technologies and features and things over the years. You've seen me install my Race Comp Engineering Tarmac 2 suspension on both my FRS and the BRZ back here. We now have the even more fancy MCS suspension with the remote reservoirs. And both of these systems were both compression and rebound adjustable, meaning you can adjust the compression damping as well as the rebound damping. Now for today's video, I thought we would get real basic and just talk about exactly what is compression and what is rebound when we talk about a shock absorber. So we've got one of my little RC trucks here to do a mini demonstration and kind of demonstrate what compression looks like in a shock absorber and what rebound looks like in a shock absorber. Now we all know, or hopefully we all know, if you don't, you're gonna find out in a second here. Shock absorbers are installed on cars in the chassis to absorb shock and dampen shock from bumps in the road or imperfections in the road. When it comes to race cars, they become a huge tuning part of the chassis. So we'll pop the body off of the truck here and I'll kind of demonstrate first what compression is and then we'll demonstrate what rebound is and then we'll get a little bit more in detail and again like I said this is going to be kind of a high level video I'm not going to get too in depth we'll start with the basics and then go on from there in the future so we have our RC truck here it has shock absorbers front and rear with springs over them just like a coil over shock on our car this is actually my stock rear shock from the BRZ obviously it is disassembled and we'll use that for another demonstration in a moment here. But compression damping and rebound damping. So the compression stroke, let's we'll start off with what is compression? Now, picture your car or your truck or whatever it is rolling down the road like this one is here. When you hit a bump in the road, your tire compresses, or the suspension I should say, compresses. The shock absorber on the front here, as the tire hits the bump, it goes up in the air and we'll see if we can get a better view here. So basically the action of that shock absorber going up or compressing, or basically compressing the shock together, that is the action of compression. Now inversely, the action of rebound is when the shock is compressed and then it goes down back into its normal position. That is the rebound action of the shock, so compression is the shock absorber compressing upward. The rebound action is the shock re-extending downward. Now we can take another look at this with the shock absorber off of the truck and demonstrate again the compression stroke. So that is when the shock compresses into itself or the shock shaft compresses into the shock body. The rebound stroke is again the shock shaft extending out of the shock body. All right, so hopefully now you understand the basics of the compression stroke and the rebound stroke when it comes to a shock absorber. Just like this RC car shock absorber, the stock shock absorber from your BRZ FRS or 86 or many other cars for that matter, behaves exactly the same. Now here's where it gets a little bit more fun when we talk about compression damping and rebound damping. When we have race dampers like we have on the car now, there is actually levels of dampening force that we can dial into the shock. In other words, we can stiffen it or we can soften it or increase or decrease the damping rate. Now the increase and decrease in the damping rate makes the shock itself behave differently. Now the reason we have the spring off of the shocks is to demonstrate what damping does for the compression stroke as well as the rebound stroke because that's where it can get a little bit confusing. So first up we'll talk about compression damping. Remember the compression stroke is when the shock shaft gets pushed into the shock body. Disregard springs that we have on the car for now. We're just looking at the shock itself and its ability to dampen or stiffen or soften the rate at which that shock shaft goes into the shock body. Otherwise, or truly known as damping. So we'll demonstrate what the damping process is on the shock. I can actually take this thing, push it into the table, and now I am feeling the damping force of the compression stroke. So how hard that shock is pushing back at me when I'm pushing it into the table. Now let's assume that this is an adjustable race shock like my MCS or those Tarmac 2s. 
I can change the damping force of that compression stroke. So if the damping is set to full soft, I can basically slam this thing to the ground. There's no damping action happening to the shock absorber when it is set in a full soft state. Because the stock shock absorber has a set damping rate and a set rebound rate, I can't really demonstrate that. If I had one of the shocks off the car, I could actually loosen it up to full soft compression damping, and I could just push this thing into the table with virtually no effort at all. On the contrary, if I dialed in that compression damping all the way to full stiff or maximum damping for the compression stroke, I would have to really, really compress this thing into the table to try to get it even to move. I, I don't even know if I could, to be honest with you. Uh, that's what you get from increased compression damping. Now, if you think about that for a moment, if you're driving down the road and you hit a bump, and let's say, for example, your compression damping is set to really, really stiff, what's gonna happen? Well, the shock, when you hit that bump, it's not gonna compress. The shock is gonna get absorbed a little bit in the shock body, but most of that force is gonna go into the car and give you a jolt or a jarring feeling. Basically, you're gonna feel it in the seat of your pants, in the chassis of the car, the steering wheel, etc. Now, if we go down to, say, mid-range compression or halfway between full soft and halfway between full stiff, when we hit that bump, the damper is then gonna be able to absorb that shock in the shock basically taking away some of that hit in the chassis, in the seat of your pants, softening the blow, so to say. Now, if we went to the fully soft on the compression damping side, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, there's gonna be very little damping in the shock absorber itself. So like I demonstrated earlier, this thing is just gonna slam in and you're kinda gonna have a similar situation as to when the shock absorber is in full stiff mode, except what's gonna happen is this thing is gonna slam up into the shock body, it's gonna bottom out, and then you're gonna feel that shock, again, come through the chassis, come through the seat of your pants, and through the steering wheel. So that's the compression stroke in a nutshell. We won't go into detail on various compression damping settings. What I do wanna show you now is the rebound side of things. Now with rebound, it's very similar to compression damping, although it gets a little bit confusing when we talk about rebound damping rates or rebound damping stiffness. This even confused me for the longest time and uh, it's a little bit tricky in your brain to figure out, but we'll try to demonstrate it again here and show you what it looks like. So if we have our shock like this, we go through the compression stroke. The compression stroke is done. So now we're going into the rebound stroke and I'm gonna take my hand off this and you'll see the shock shaft actually slide out on its own at a certain rate of speed. So here we go. All right, so that's the rebound stroke and the rebound rate or the rebound damping rate is determined by how fast that shock comes out or how much damping you're giving it. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you have an adjustable suspension set up again like with the MCS or the Tarmac 2s that I've had, if you go to full soft, full soft rebound damping or no or very little rebound damping, what's gonna happen is this shock shaft is gonna shoot out real fast. So in other words, we're not actually dampening the action of the shock coming out of the shock body. So hopefully by now you can guess what would happen if we go to full stiff or maximum rebound damping. If we crank up the dial, full stiff rebound dampening, what's gonna happen when we go through our compression stroke and then we let it out, this is gonna come out super, super slow because we have maximum damping force on that rebound stroke. Now, it's a little bit easier to demonstrate with the baby shock absorber here. Hopefully you guys can see that, but when I push it in, it's actually not even coming out right now. So this is an extreme, this wouldn't happen in a real car, but if we had maximum rebound damping capabilities, this shock shaft is gonna just creep out of here really, really, really slow, right? And again, versus very little rebound compression damping, I'm sorry, very little rebound damping. See, it's confusing me even just doing this video. So again, if we have full soft rebound, very little rebound damping, when that shock goes to extend, boom, it's just gonna come right out. All right, everybody, hopefully that made sense. Quick little recap, the compression stroke is when the shock shaft goes into the shock body. Compression damping is how much resistance there is pushing back when I'm pushing that shock shaft into the shock body. Rebound is the action of the shock shaft coming out of the shock body again, and rebound damping is how much force we're applying to that shock shaft as it's coming 
out of the shock body. The more damping we add to that rebound action, the slower that shock shaft is gonna come out of the body. And again, when we have adjustable suspension, you can get into all kinds of crazy different tuning scenarios and being able to change the behavior of the car by how much compression dampening you're adding to the shocks, how much rebound damping you're adding to the shocks and so forth. All right, everybody, let's wrap this one up. Suspension, compression, and rebound basics coming at you from the garage. Hopefully the video was helpful and you learned a little bit of suspension information today that you can apply to my future videos. As you remember, I talk about suspension and compression, rebound sway bars, all kinds of stuff all the time in a lot of my race videos. So hopefully this helps you understand what I'm talking about a little bit more. And as always, don't forget to leave your comments down below. I would love to hear from you if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns. Don't forget, stay fast out there, everybody. I am checking out. We'll talk to you all next time.